Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church. What a pleasure it is to be with you in the house of the Lord this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. Again, welcome to church, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy to be here with you. louder Tom thank you sir we handed you a worship enhancement survey we'd love to know your feedback on this particular first Sunday service so if you'll take a little time and fill that out you can just drop it on the tables at the back as you leave or if you need more time bring that with you next week or just 
drop it in the mail to us. We'd love to know so we can continue to make our services more and more meaningful. So please take a little time again, look through your bulletin. Right now, I know that you've come in and you haven't had a chance to greet folks, so let's stand and introduce ourselves to one another in Christ's love. As you make your way back to the pew in which you're seated, I hope that you might retrieve the Ritual of Friendship pad. We'd love to know that you were with us, so if that's close by where you're seated now, if you'll take that out, we'd love for you to sign, pass it down so everyone has an opportunity to sign. Let's now continue in worship.
confession, deeply aware that too often we give in to temptation or take in well-meant endeavors instead have had unintended consequences and become our mistake. And so we turn again to the loving presence of Jesus, asking us to choose again his new way of life and to love each other and this earth. And so we acknowledge our sin and seek forgiveness to be restored within. Will you join with me in the prayer of confession this morning? God of mercy, you sent Jesus to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you, sometimes turning aside from your way. We tend to be misled by pride, seeing ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. Forgive the times this week when we have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored your truth. Have mercy, O oh God, and forgive our sins. Return us to the path of righteousness as we follow more closely our Lord and Savior, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Turn again to you, O Lord, and ask that you will wash us clean. This we pray in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Broken, in Jesus Christ we are made whole. Thirsty, we are filled by the Holy Spirit's living water. Longing for that renewed relationship with God. We are welcomed with open arms by the one who forgives us. Without a doubt, God's love never comes to an end. And I declare to you in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Good morning. I brought some practice sheets for us today. Have you ever seen a math worksheet? Have you? Okay. You, you do times? Okay. Well, let's practice this one a little bit. 7 plus 5. 12. 8 plus 7. 4 plus 5. Four. Two plus two. Ooh, y'all are good. So, worksheets. You practice them, right? Take them home. Sometimes do them in school. Sometimes do them at home. And as you go through them, you get better and better and better, right? Okay? Got another one. This one is a spelling worksheet, but we're going to trace the words. So it's a handwriting practice. Okay, can you tell me what that first word is? Mail. Mail, okay. M A I L. Good. And we could do it twice if we wanted to do that. How about this one down here, number four? What's it look like? Rain. R A I N. And we could trace it again. So those are practice. So practice spelling and practice with handwriting. 
What else do you practice? Practice math. It's really good to practice math. What else do you practice? Reading. Good. What else do you practice? You can practice acolyting. If you're going to acolyte, we like you to be rehearsed. What do you practice? What do you practice? Science. Science, okay. Do any of you play sports? I do karate. Karate. Do you have to practice that? Yes. You have to go through your different moves. What else do we practice? Anybody here play soccer? Soccer? Okay. And baseball? So you practice throwing and catching in one of those sports. You practice kicking in the other and running. Football? Good. So you know how to practice things, right? There's another thing that I practice sometimes. It's kind of funny. I brought this trash can from the Edinburgh room. I didn't realize how many folks need a trash can in the Edinburgh room on a Sunday morning. But I like to practice baskets. Do you ever do that? Sometimes. What's that? There you go. <gasps> Want to try from there? Sure. There we go. Oh, my word. I'm running out of paper. I was the one who was practicing. Okay, try. You got one in? Perfect. Okay. Good. There you go. Whoops, I'm sorry. I was going to let you try. So do you all practice that at home? No. I love practicing that. You don't ever do that? Well, ask for permission before you do it. If you have things that have to go in the trash can, they may let you try going from a distance. Oh, that's hard when the trash cans close. Yeah. Those are, those are tough. So, all these different things that we practice. Yep. Last practice there, and I'll put that over there, because that can take your whole day practicing baskets in the trash can. Today we're going to talk about something else that are called spiritual practices. Spiritual practices. One of them is prayer. Have you ever prayed? Yes. Okay. And people teach us how to pray. They say, fold your hands and bow your heads. They tell us that prayer is talking to God. Well, that's a spiritual practice. And the more you do it, the better you get at talking to God. There are some other spiritual practices. One of them is called simplicity. What do you think that means? It means rather than getting stuff, you try to give stuff away or not spend your life accumulating. Another one is called fasting. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, some of you heard of fasting. What happens when you fast? You don't eat. That's right. And sometimes fasting goes on for a long time. You don't sleep when you fast? Well, a lot of times you're paying attention, you're a little more intent on God. And so there could be times that you're fasting and you're also staying awake to pray. Oh, I do pray when I'm asleep. It's good to pray right as you're going to sleep, isn't it? Kind of move your night along with prayer. Well, those are called spiritual practices. And for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about those in here. One of them is called worshiping. Have you ever worshiped? Yes. Yeah. It's a spiritual practice. It's praising God. Well, that's what we're going to do for the next few weeks in a season called Lent. In fact, we're going to spend 40 days focusing on spiritual practices. And so every Sunday that you come... We're going to have just a little different focus on something. So, you all practice spelling and handwriting and math. You practice science, all your different subjects. You practice your sports. We're going to practice trying to spend a little more time focusing on God. Now, if we were going to pray, what would we do? We'd fold our hands, bow our heads. Let's talk to God in prayer. God, as we gather here at the start of the season of Lent, we ask you to direct us. 
Help us to understand who you are and how we can get closer and closer to you. God, you let us talk to you in prayer. You let us praise you in worship. You let us serve you by serving other people. Again, during this time, help us to practice our faith. I thank you for these young disciples and I thank you for their wonderful lives and how they are active in practicing so many things. Now bless them and bless us as we move forward practicing faith in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you all for coming today and thanks for coming down to help me. in our service our choir is coming forward to offer a song and our ushers will come forward to receive the offering you have brought to give to God today
Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you that you have given us skills and talents whereby we may make a living. We thank you that we have learned how to manage our money so that it works for us to support our church, to provide for our own and our family's needs, to share with those whose lives may be better by our generosity. We also give of ourselves knowing that this last portion of our giving is what makes our gift complete. Accept all of these gifts and use them to accomplish more than we could ever imagine for Christ Church. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. We claim to be a Stephen ministry congregation. We are one of many of the churches in this country that engage in this one-on-one -on -one Christian caregiving ministry. Now, our church has been involved in Stephen ministry for well over a quarter of a century, over 25 years. I'd like to ask all the people in the church who have been trained during that time as Stephen ministers to stand. So you look in the balcony, you look down front, you look all around. These are some of those caring Christian listeners who provide one-on-one -on -one care. Thank you. You can be seated. The Stephen Ministry Program is a highly organized program. It involves training Stephen ministers. And Stephen ministers are people who say they're going to be willing to be trained to be one-on-one -on -one listeners with people to be put into Stephen ministry relationships for people in time of transition. And Stephen ministers go through 50 hours of training. We're getting ready to have a new class sometime in the spring, moving towards the summer. So if you're interested in that, just talk to any of the folks you see down front in a few minutes, and we'll celebrate that. But the Stephen ministry program is not just those caring relationships. There's a coordination of that. And that happens in our Stephen leader team. Where Stephen ministers are trained in 50 hours here in the church, Stephen leaders go to a ministry workshop that runs for an entire week. And our Stephen leadership team is always looking to bring new leaders on so we can continue to provide that type of training for our people and that type of oversight of the program. So you saw some of the folks in our congregation are trained Stephen ministers. Right now I'd like to ask our Stephen leader team to come forward, if you will. So if you're active on the Stephen Leader team, Dr. Harvey, you'll see a few over here. Dr. Harvey and I both went to Stephen Leader training 20 years ago because we believe that the ministry here is something that we want to support and we want to engage in. So we rotate our membership on the Leader team. The Leader team meets monthly and they coordinate the ministry. They provide for the continuing education for the Stephen ministers. They also brainstorm how the Stephen ministry program can serve the congregation. If you remember, um, just this past year, they had a wonderful program for us on our memorial garden. They also led us through a thing called the five wishes, planning for your life and planning for the end of life issues. The Stephen ministries also Stephen ministers also come to our funeral receptions. They greet at the door, they operate the elevator, and they help people in times of grief and transition. This is our Stephen leader team, and we are very excited today to be welcoming a new member to our team. So Connie, would you come forward? Now, is Connie wearing her Stephen leader badge or her Stephen minister badge? Stephen minister badge. Connie Shipley took a week's vacation in January, and she went to Orlando to undergo Stephen Leader training. How many hours total was that involved? It was five and a half days, but some of the days went into like Went into the hours. nights, okay. <laughs> so Connie did a lot of training over there, came back, brought some new ideas, helped our team kind of reevaluate what we do in ministry, and so we've had an infusion of some new spirit in, in Connie coming along. We want you to recognize her today for that training, and I'm going to get her certificate over here. This is what was given to her at Stephen Ministry. Connie J. Shipley of First Presbyterian Church has attended the Stephen Ministry Leaders Training Course. 
in recognition of which this certificate is awarded in Orlando on the 17th day of January, 2020. So I'd like you to congratulate Connie on that work and completing that. Now, for several years, you've been wearing a Stephen Minister badge around, so people in the congregation, when they see you, know that you're one of those people who might be assigned if they were going through a time of transition. So as you look at the folks down here, you look at the folks who stood around here, if you are having some issue in your life and it would benefit you to have a caring, trained Christian listener to be a part of your life, you can call upon Stephen Ministry, these folks and the folks you saw standing are the ones who may be assigned to you in that. So you've had your Stephen Minister badge. Now we would like to add another badge to you, and that is your Stephen Leader badge. Let's bow before God in a word of prayer. God, when we look in the New Testament, we find that Stephen was called. He was a man full of grace. And he and others were appointed by the apostles to care for people in the church of Jesus Christ. Stephen was the first martyr of the church as he gave his life fully for the ministry of Jesus Christ. As the Stephen ministry program has existed over the decades, people have been called and trained. They have given their time, their talents, and who they are to help other people. It is a blessed ministry because it produces blessings all around. We thank you for the Stephen ministers in our congregation and their eagerness to give up their time to just be a Christian listener to people in times of transition. We also praise you and thank you for those who have taken this extra step, who've given a week of their time and who have now participated with us in Stephen Leader training and join our Stephen Leader team. God, we ask you to bless this group that stands in front of the congregation today and bless Connie as she begins this journey in this new phase of ministry. We ask you, God, to help us constantly to be full of grace just like Stephen and to reach out with love and care to the world around. Bless us so we can be a blessing and continue to help us to be a Stephen Ministry congregation. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. And would you extend the right hand of fellowship? And you can greet your new Stephen leader, even though you've already put her to work. And again, we're looking at a new Stephen Ministry training program, and if you would be interested in going through that 50 hours of training, this group here are part of the instruction team, too. We'd love to have you watch your bulletin, watch Tower Chimes, and join us in that. Let us now offer our prayers to God. Almighty God, in life and in death we belong to you, and if we are blessed between those two events, a lot of living is done. We celebrate birthdays, graduations, and wedding anniversaries. We spend many days in classrooms. We have had times to remember, to savor the moments, and to dream. We may have undergone military or other on-the-job training. There have been times for study, work, and play. Some days were probably spent recovering from an illness, injury, or surgery. In all likelihood, we have experienced our share of disappointments, sorrows, and trials. There have been times when we bonded with family or friends. We observe holidays and enjoy vacation time. We have known the joy of coming home. 
we receive awards, certificates, honors, and perhaps multiple recognitions before we retire. We take time for private and public worship. Yes, between our birth and our death, we do a lot of living. And through it all, you have been with us. We are so grateful that in life and in death, we belong to you. And that when death comes, you are there to welcome us into our eternal home, having known all the days allotted to us. Great physician, we commend the world to your loving care as over 86,000 cases have been confirmed of persons infected with COVID-19. We pray for the medical professionals as they care for the patients and as they take every precaution so that they do not become infected themselves. We mourn with those who have lost loved ones and we pray for those fighting for their lives battling this disease whose symptoms may not indicate to them how extremely ill they are until it has gotten a strong, cold grip on them. Hear us as we pray for all who are confined to hospitals and other health care facilities, for all those recovering from illness, injuries, or surgery, and for all those undergoing therapies or treatments in the quest to regain their health. O oh Lord, we pray for families in crisis, for husbands and wives experiencing stress and tension in their marriage, and for their children who are aware of the trouble within. We remember families strained by alcoholism, financial difficulties, or others interfering in the marital relationship. Holy Comforter, we ask your blessing on those who grieve the loss of their homes and possessions, on those who have become unable to live independently, on those who have encountered losses of hearing, mobility, or vision related to aging, and on those who are saddened by the dissolution of relationships, anoint them with the soothing balm of your love. God of great compassion, hear us as we pray for those who are depressed, for those who are homeless, for those who are hungry, for those who are illiterate, for those who are incarcerated, for those in need of guidance, for those who are troubled, and for those who are unemployed. We commend to your care those who first respond to our cries for help, for our heroes in uniform serving in our armed forces, whether at home or abroad, for those working feverishly in medical labs to find vaccines for illnesses, for those who teach and inspire the leaders of tomorrow, and for all in government who make, execute, and judge our laws. All these prayers and the silent ones of our hearts we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture lesson for today comes to us in the gospel according to Matthew. I invite you to turn in the Bible that you brought from home or the Bible that you'll find in the pew to Matthew chapter 4. I'll be reading today from the New Revised Standard Version, beginning with verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished, and the tempter came to him. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was time to go. There was work to be done. There was a life to be lived, and Jesus started his public ministry with 40 days in the wilderness. Matthew and Mark and Luke all tell us that after Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness, and for 40 days and 40 nights Jesus fasted, and he was tempted by the devil. Now in the Bible up to this point, we'd already seen some interesting incidents in the life of Jesus. We'd seen his incredible birth. We had seen how he grew as a child in a family with godly parents, Mary and Joseph. 
and now Jesus is 30 years old, and it's time for his work to be done. Right there, as he's baptized by John in the Jordan River, as the Spirit of God descends upon him like a dove, as a voice comes from heaven that says, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased, as Jesus is literally sitting on go, ready to do his life's work, the Spirit leads him into the wilderness for 40 long days. It's an interesting start to the next adventure, to retreat before you go out and lead the charge. But maybe that's what we need to do to really make sure that our next step is following God. You see, this 40-day period has drawn a lot of tension over the years. Each year after Christmas and after Epiphany and before Easter, Christians all around the globe participate in a 40-day adventure. It's become the basis for the Christian season that we call Lent. Just like Jesus going out into the wilderness, these 40 days are there for spiritual practices. You see, Matthew tells us that Jesus was led into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and he fasted. Now, it's interesting that some of the children down front understood what fasting was, because fasting over the years has been kind of a strange concept to many of us. Now, in our culture, there's a little more talk in the sacred and the secular world about fasting. There's intermittent fasting, which is a health technique. Many of us, or at least people my age, say, well, I've got to go down for my fasting blood work before I go see the doctor. But when we mention fasting, it's not what we really come across in the pages of the Bible. You see, there it's a spiritual, not just a physical practice. And fasting in the Bible is almost always coupled with prayer. Jesus fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. And it is assumed that this behavior was a part of spiritual practices that helped him to focus more intently on God. Matthew gives us a very short story. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted. That means during that time, he didn't spend any time gathering food for 40 days and 40 nights. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus didn't spend any time preparing food. He didn't spend any of his time eating food. He obviously had a lot of time available to focus on God, and that's how he prepared for the next challenge and opportunity in life. Now friends, each of us may find ourselves right now with work to be done and lives to be lived. I'd like to suggest that we might want to retreat a little before we try to lead the next charge in our lives. Lent is an invitation to follow Jesus for 40 days into the wilderness and to devote ourselves to spiritual practices. Biblical scholars have studied what people in faith do, and they've identified prayer and meditation, fasting and simplicity, solitude, confession, service, worship. Over the next several weeks, Alan and Sarah and I will be digging into what the Bible tells us about these spiritual practices and how they've helped the people of God focus more clearly on God. I hope you'll come the Sundays that you're in town and learn the lessons. I hope that you'll do the homework on Monday through Saturday after the week as we walk along in 40 days and follow the path of Jesus. In the very early church, Lent was reserved as a time to prepare new converts for baptism. People who were coming to faith, especially in the explosive growth of the church, found that the 40 days of Lent was a good time to prepare themselves. Baptisms at that time were often held late Saturday night on Holy Saturday. And when the people woke up for their first Easter as a Christian, they were dressed in a new white robe and they took communion for the first time. A little later in the story of the church, Lent came to be a period of self-examination for people who had been previously baptized. 
It was a time of refocusing. It was a time of looking at life, what life had become, and then spending less time concerned about our own lives, our wants, and more time focusing on the needs of others and on God. Lent has been, for many Christians, a time to reflect on where we stand in our relation to God and of doing things a little bit differently for a relatively short period of time to see if those practices will help us to experience God more fully. In thinking about Lent this year, I went back to reread not only account, the accounts in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but also I reread a little definition from one of my favorite writers, a Presbyterian minister named Frederick Beekner. In a book, Whistling in the Dark, a Doubter's Dictionary, he tries to define Lent. In many cultures, Beekner writes, there's an ancient custom of giving a tenth of each year's income to some holy use. For Christians, to observe the 40 days of Lent is to do the same thing with roughly a tenth of each year's days. After being baptized by John in the River Jordan, Jesus went off alone into the wilderness where he spent 40 days asking himself the questions of what it meant to be Jesus. Christians are supposed to ask one way or another what it means to be themselves. Lent, Beekner says, is curiously 40 days, roughly one-tenth of the days in a year. What would happen to your life this year if you considered making Lent the tithe of your time? What would happen to you spiritually if on these next 40 days you prayed a little bit more and maybe reread the Gospels? What would happen in your life if you dedicated one-tenth of this year to exploring fasting, simplicity, solitude, confession, service, and worship a little more deeply? Let's listen to see if the Spirit isn't inviting us to journey into the wilderness for 40 days and experience some spiritual practices, a little retreat before we lead the next charge in life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you walked into church this morning, you might have started by smelling a little bit of smoke because we were in here Wednesday night for Ash Wednesday. Right now you're probably smelling lunch because it is starting to smell real good. And I hope after we come to this table, you'll join us downstairs at the other tables. Well, in our church, we start Lent every year with Ash Wednesday. And a number of people gathered in this sanctuary to be marked with the ashes. We also start Lent every year in our church by pausing to come to the Lord's table. We think that's where we find the refreshment for the 40-day journey ahead. I invite you now to come and taste the goodness of God's grace at Christ's table. Please be seated. The story that starts with the birth of Jesus kind of moves through his life, and near the end, we come to a story at table. We find in the Gospels that our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his followers who were gathered with him and said, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. 
And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the sign of the new covenant. My blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. For whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. As we read that story and know that it's our story, we're told as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. Trusting that promise, let's bow before God in prayer. God, before Jesus made the journey to the cross, before he set his disciples out into a garden and knew what would happen in their lives in the days ahead, he invited them to come and sup at table. While they were together there, he shared with them bread and wine, and he said that this was his body and this was his blood. God, we know that that promise is also to us. We ask you to take such common people as us, people that you call the body of Christ the church, and through the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, help us to taste the body and blood of Christ in these elements. God, as we gather here today, we do thank you for a journey, not just of 40 days or 40 years, but a journey that extends throughout our lives. We ask you to nourish us at this table, help us to experience the real presence of Christ in our lives, and help us to taste of your goodness and grace this day. Bless this meal now as you bless those who partake in Christ's name. As you've seen in the bulletin, the elements will be coming to you. On the bread trays, you will find a glass cup in the center of the trays. Those are gluten-free pieces of bread if you need that in order to fully participate. We're going to ask everyone who is served to hold the element until all are served. Once the elders and deacons come down front, we once again will partake together. The gifts of God for the people of God. Serve God's people with joy.
Christ's body has been broken so that we might be made whole. Take and eat. gifts of God for the people of God serve God's people with joy.
Christ's blood has been shed, take, drink the cup of salvation. The gift of yourself to us will strengthen us as we continue on our way, following our Savior, making small but important sacrifices, and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with others we encounter along the way to the cross and the empty tomb. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you to please stand and let's conclude our worship together as we sing hymn 166, Lord, who throughout these 40 days... Stephen leaders and Stephen ministers are going to be disappearing in a moment to get ready in the kitchen for you to come down and join us for lunch. They're your hosts today. We hope that you'll stay around and join us downstairs. Simply go to a table, get your, well, get your drink, go to the table. As soon as your table is filled, if you'll just send somebody to the kitchen, you can get a casserole. It's a beefaroni. You can also get tossed salad. There are dressings on the table, dressings on the side table. And today we've actually prepared a gluten-free option that is the same. So on the corner of the serving table, you'll find gluten-free option. And it is a beefaroni, and there's also one just with marinara, if you would like. So we hope you'll come spend a little time around that table, fellowship with one another, and celebrate what we share together in Jesus Christ. Let's have a word of prayer so once your table gets your food, you don't have to wait too long. God, we ask you to bless the hands that have prepared and will serve this meal. We ask you to bless all who will partake and help us just to celebrate on this Lenten journey that the fellowship and the presence of other Christians makes the journey possible. Bless this food and bless this time we ask in Christ's name. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with all of us now and forevermore. Amen.
table. 